One of the hardest parts about starting any new eating regimen is how to set up the kitchen. And it was hard for me too, and I am quite the home chef. So I thought in this episode, I would share just some day in the life things, what my fridge looks like, where I have my food, and how I set up the kitchen. You can see I'm wobbling a little bit because I thought it'd be best to just have me on a, um, a stick for this one. So let's come over here for a second and let's look right behind me. See that there? Those are what I call my daily go-tos. Now we have poppy seeds, pumpkin seeds, and then those are hemp, and then some ground flax. I don't keep a lot of ground flax in here because it does go bad quickly. And then in the back we have our walnuts, and this is kind of like daily what I need to make sure I'm sprinkling on my foods, get my omega-3s in, and so many more healthy things in each one of those that I will go through individually on different episodes. But I keep them on the counter. That way, you know, it's something that I always see. That donkey back there, if you're wondering, my mommy made me that back in 1973. Now, it's hard for me to get those items in, even on the counter. I did an episode, and I'll, I'll put the link up here for you, on what I do with flax. I make a delicious cracker, that recipe's on there, and I'm, I'm finding it much easier. Oops, there's a bug in my house. First day my windows are open since summer, um, and a dragonfly just flew in. Oopsies, anywho. I find it hard to get that flax in, and I'm noticing now that with a cracker, I'm able to get it in better. So let's go look over at my pantry and my fridge, and I have a lot of food. It is not very organized. Oh, just a second, my eggs are boiling. I'm trying to, right here, make some protein. So I've got my eggs going. So um, I have an episode on how to make eggs that peel really well. I'll leave you that one too. So let's go to the fridge and I'll show you what's in there. First things first, to me, my fridge is not full right now. Um, it may shock you, but to me, this is an empty fridge. Um, my son has my car right now, and two days ago I um, made this seven pounds of chicken and lentils and rice for my two sons and their friends. And so 25 year old boys just eat a lot. And I haven't gotten to the grocery store because my son has my car. So let's go and check this out. All right, here is the fridge. Tonight we are having um, kielbasa and sauerkraut. Here is some barley. Um, I cook grains and just have them on hand to sprinkle on stuff. Today I'm gonna sprinkle it on my cottage cheese and avocado that's already made up because I made some for my husband too. He didn't get any barley on his, I forgot. Or I might put some lentils. This is some lentils, so I might put lentils on there. And then I have a piece of cantaloupe and watermelon I'm having for lunch too. And here's some homemade stock sitting there to be used, but see how empty that is? Oh, so empty. I'll probably roast those carrots for dinner tonight because that is really the only fresh vegetable I have besides onion, parsley, and cilantro. So uh, it's pretty bare in here. Mushrooms will go in also. But this is considered bare for me, very bare. I've got my hibiscus tea here, my Jamaica, um, that is so stinking good for you. I'll do an episode on that. Uh, it's amazing. Now on to the pantry. The pantry's a mess. I really need to figure this out. Um, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but this is life. Okay, so these are my snacks. My son just bought me these for my birthday, so. I gotta find a time to eat that carb overload. Here's my chocolate. This is my basket. I keep chocolate covered almonds. Um, I really didn't like this Lily's chocolate. Um, I'll make my husband eat it. It's sugar free, didn't like it. Oh, what else? A kind of bars in here. This is just kind of go-tos. I really wasn't a fan of these Rip Van wafers. They're, you know, they taste like fake sugar. Over here, we've got our almonds and tortilla chips coconut clusters, sunflower seeds. Here's our flax. Here are our flax crackers I made. 
Always keep lots of beans on hand. My almond butter, tomatoes back there. Here's hemp parts. I haven't used these yet. Um, you know, French fried onions, but they're pretty low in carb. And I thought, well, that's a great way to, um, you know, get some flavor. But they do have, you know, sunflower, safflower and canola oil in them, but also eat them. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm, oh, and then down here, you know, you got your BOGO tortilla chips. I've got some beets I gotta figure out what to do with. I found that if I'm in the real noodle mood, egg noodles have a little less carbs. So just a tip for you. And uh, that used to be packed full. There's still little pasta, but I gave five pounds away to my boys. I'm trying this red lentil pasta. We'll see what that's like. And then in the door are just a, really a lot of, a lot of this, is fish and these are all my dog's fish. Um, yeah, good salmon, all my packets. And then, you know, I've got 5,000 different vinegars and what have nots and my oils and such there. Over here is usually beaming full of tomatoes and avocado and but you can see i am in need so that is a day in the life of my kitchen even stuff in the sink for you oh the window opens feels so good don't i look romantic <laughs> i thought as i ate my lunch we'd eat together and i tell you some of the things i love about eating for menopausal health and following the Galveston diet rules, uh, counting my macros, making sure my carb percentages are, you know, about 15 to 20% and that they're healthy carbs like my lentils and not eating junk. Um, and, oh, I forgot, I have my, my uh, flaxseed I have to eat too. Um, and I thought I would share with you some things that I am learning. The thing I love best about this diet is that I don't feel deprived. The entire, let's see, it is the end of October, mid to end of October, and I started this around May 10th. I have not felt deprived. Maybe in those first couple weeks I did a couple times, but it's been well under 10 times that I have felt deprived eating the, with the Galveston diet rules. I mean, how could I? I'm eating delicious lentils. These are curried. Uh, I just boiled the lentils, a pound of lentils. Then I put two tablespoons of a Middle Eastern curry. It wasn't the yellow curry. It was a Middle Eastern curry, just slightly different. Put that in there and I threw in French fried onions because I was too lazy to cut up an onion. Like I, I crunched them up and put that in here too. <laughs> That's it. One of the boys said, I made lentils this week and they sure didn't taste like that. Back to not feeling deprived. You know, like going to restaurants is so much easier on this diet because they're like, if you go to a Mexican restaurant, I mean, you, know, you can have two corn tortillas, that's 20 grams of per, or 20 grams of carbs, no big deal. Or get a taco salad and don't eat the shell. I've done that a couple times or order fajitas. Usually those come with corn tortillas, which is great. Um, and I, I might have a corn tortilla, but if not, I just have the fajitas. There's so much there. And they also usually give you beans and rice. I eat the beans and bring the rice home for my dog. Um, you know, going to restaurants, I went to Texas Roadhouse. That was so easy. I had a half a potato, um, a salad and a steak. It was perfect. I didn't eat any of the bread. I refrained something funny here for you so I mentioned my husband and making his lunch early on prior after week one of eating this way I told my husband I think you have to start doing this diet or you're gonna get fat because he was still eating you know I'd make this high fat high healthy fat meal and then he would still I'd make him rice or pasta on the side or something like that and so I started to think, oh my gosh, he's gonna get so fat by 
eating what I eat and then a lot of carbs. So he went on it with me, has been doing it um, three weeks less than I have, I think is when he started. And um, of course his first three weeks he lost 16 pounds. Anyhow, he um, loves the diet. So, you know, my cousins are on this diet too and sister. And so they joke with him saying, saying menopause really agrees with you, Trey. <laughs> And speaking of my family, they are loving this diet too. They don't have cravings. It is miraculous. You know, I never did keto or anything like that. I always did like Weight Watchers and just counting my calories. So um, this is not keto at all. Um, that first three weeks, your body may go into ketosis, but you are not eating just whatever you want, a stick of butter, that kind of thing, which I hear, you know, happens sometimes. Oh, there's that dragonfly. Um, he'll find his way out, I hope. Anyway, um, you know, it's just, it's so easy to eat this way. And you feel like you get a ton of food. There are some times, especially in those first six weeks when I was on Refuel Refocus, where I was, so full, I couldn't eat anymore. And all I had was 1100 calories in a day. Now you try not to count your calories, but my, my fitness pal always has them. So I was just curious to look and I'm like, oh my gosh, but I could not eat anything else. I felt that full and it's all healthy food. You know, I'm not putting anything in me that is not fuel. And that's what's important, you know, when you think about the refuel, refocus, you know, you're fueling your body, giving it good things. I mean, lentils, cottage cheese, avocado, flax, and fruit. What a perfect meal. Mm. One thing I like to do is plan my food for the day. And I do this to set myself up for success and you know, I find if I go backwards and I put my dinner in first and then go forward, put my dinner in, then my, my, this meal, you know, my lunch or breakfast, breakfast, because I'm breaking my fast, even though it's 11, um, this meal in, and then I put a snack in and it helps me to, um, stay on track. And so like today, you know, I logged in first that I'm going to be having the sauerkraut and some kielbasa with potato and mushroom. And then, oh, I didn't put my roasted carrots in. I need to put the roasted carrots in with some olive oil. And that was my dinner. Then I went from there. Now I already had the cottage cheese and avocado made up because that's what I, you know, the main thing I gave my husband. Um, and um, so, you know, I, I have that. And then I built on that based on what I'm having for dinner. So, you know, since dinner was already in, it's like, okay, I need, you know, I could enjoy some good lentils with my cottage cheese and avocado, and then the fruit, and then of course, you know, my flax seeds, or flax crackers. And you'll see on my, my screenshots I did for you, everything's in here that I know my percentages, I know where I'm at and it just makes me feel almost like secure, like this grounded, secure feeling that I know what I'm eating in the day. And I know a lot of you, you know, you're, you work outside your home and so it's kind of hard, like, well, I can't do that. I can't, you know, I don't know what I'm having for dinner at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. My advice is, is that you better start planning. You know, when you're up in the morning getting ready for work, you should be thinking, what's for dinner? I know you're thinking, Kathy, go F off. But I'm serious. Like, if you can plan, do a little planning, and get that all in order, then it will make this diet, any diet, so much better if you know what's for dinner before you have your first meal of the day. So that's my challenge for you, is to ha know what's for dinner. And if you need suggestions, that's what I'm here for. That's why I'm cooking up a storm for you guys. I have 200 recipes before I started Galveston Diet that can easily be morphed into a Galveston Diet meal. Down below, 
I'm gonna link up some recipes that I know I have that are already Galveston diet friendly and put them for you to look at that are in those 200 episodes I did before I started Galveston. You can be successful on your menopause journey and I am here to help you and to be there with you all the way. Thank you for watching. Oh, one more thing. I wanted to show you my progress on my weight. This screenshot is where I was at. May 1st, I weighed 173 and was like, hold the phone. Oops, my eggs are done. 173 is a no-no. I hadn't been that until I, you know, was after I had my baby and was trying to get down to my normal weight. So that's when I bought um, the new menopause book and the Galveston Diet. Both, ran, or both are by um, Mary Clay Haver. I recommend them. They are amazing. Those are down below too. So thanks for watching this episode and we'll see you next time.